So uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're at in the world. I'm Joe Rosner. I'm going to be your presenter today. And um, one of the things I already told Karen when we were speaking earlier is that um, I am working from a home office today. And uh, one of my hobbies my wife and I have is rehabbing abused and neglected dogs for a local shelter. So if you hear barking, it doesn't mean I'm under attack. It just means a package has been delivered or a, a squirrel ran by the window or something like that. Uh, real quick, covering my background, I spent most of my career, uh, about 15 years of it, selling services and technology to corporate HR departments. Uh, before that, I uh, did uh, work in the military, in law enforcement. I was a professional bodyguard. I was also a cameraman and writer for a number of years of corporate videos. And um, my qualifications uh, in, uh, include uh, military law enforcement, bodyguard experience, of course, a couple of different black belts. Growing up on the south side of Chicago, I also count as a qualification. Um, so we're going to uh, focus in on workplace violence, personal safety training. This is really for frontline employees that um, are at risk of being a victim of workplace violence. We're going to you know, cover the basics, the uh, overview and definition of what workplace violence is, the four types of workplace violence and the risk factors. We're gonna talk about ways you can, you can make predictions about who is most likely to become violent, some strategies and tactics for talking people down if they get out of control, uh, what actions you can take if somebody is threatening you or you're actually under attack, and what to do after a uh, violent event has uh, occurred. Uh, definition of workplace violence is, is fairly straightforward. It's any physical assault, threatening behavior, or verbal abuse that, that happens in a work setting. The workplace doesn't have to be an office or a factory. It can be any location where an employee is doing a job. That can mean traveling to and from a, uh, a client's location or a customer's location, running out to pick up supplies. Of course, we run into a gray area these days with so many people working from home. Does that become workplace violence or domestic violence if something happens there? And again, with workplace violence, like any human activity, there's a, a large amount of gray there. Um, so again, the, the employer's location is not the only place, the, the surrounding perimeter, parking lots, field locations, Etc. Any place somebody's doing their job, uh, then they experience violence. It's workplace violence. Uh, examples would include uh, beatings, stabbings, uh, suicides, uh, firearm use, uh, sexual assaults, uh, threatening uh, uh, and obscene phone calls, uh, intimidating behavior, any kind of harassment, and following, swearing, or shouting at somebody. Now, I grew up on the south side of Chicago. So we didn't think following or swearing or shouting at somebody was violence. We, uh, we really just called that recess. But uh, there's a reason that we do consider it violence, which is that workplace violence falls into a continuum, beginning with fairly low-level stuff, the uh, negative uh, verbal activities. Uh, not all insulting, bullying, or intimidating behavior rises to the level of violence. It's all very based on situation and context. If you have uh, a, an employee, for instance, or a customer that you know is generally a good person, but they're just having a bad day and they say something stupid that they regret, uh, then maybe you cut them some slack, some slack. On the other hand, if they are engaging in that kind of behavior on a regular basis, it's probably something that needs to be de dealt with. And you see, we have this continuum. And what happens is when somebody is allowed to get away with a certain type of behavior, they often interpret that as permission to move it up a step to the next level. I'll give you a classic example of this. I am not Rudy Giuliani's biggest fan. Um, in a lot of areas, I do disagree with him. But I will say he was, when he was the mayor of New York, he overall did a pretty good job and was particularly effective at helping to bring down the crime rate. When Rudy took office, he instructed the chief of police to start enforcing laws related to jaywalking and littering and those type of things, nuisance crimes. 
Now, you know, you think, wow, Rudy, really? Um, it's not safe to walk in Central Park. You'll get mugged. There's people openly, openly dealing drugs in, in uh, Times Square. You want us to worry about litter bugs and, and about jaywalkers? That doesn't make sense. But it actually does, because what Rudy was relying on is a criminal, criminology theory by O.W. Wilson, who came up with what's called the broken window theory of policing. And what that says is if a person, if a, a property owner is not required to maintain their property, they can leave a unbroken window, un, uh, or broken window unfixed, you know, maybe put a piece of cardboard over it or a, a pillow stuffed in it or something. That uh, allows criminals in the area to feel that, that the community is not really on top of things, that it's a permissive community that they can get away with a lot. And so that will take them up to the next level of crime. So if you were a criminal and you arrived in New York City ready to go to work for the day and you saw people getting arrested for jaywalking and littering, you're going to know you can't get away with other crimes right there. So, um, you know, this continuum, again, you have to use good judgment here. But if uh, insulting, bullying, intimidating behavior is at a certain level or at a certain frequency, this probably means somebody needs to put a, uh, you know, to, to nip it in the bud. This might mean, you know, just a gentle conversation with a coworker. Hey, I, I feel like you're acting inappropriately and I'm concerned about it. Could you please stop? To bringing HR in and getting them involved, uh, actual formal written or verbal uh, reprimand um, or management can be involved to do that. Once it moves up to the level where there's actual threats, vandalizing and stalking occurring, any of those actions, you're probably looking at at least some level of bringing in the authorities. Um, you know, certainly a stern warning in a, in a disciplinary uh, action of some sort, certainly written. And, you know, if you do not stop this kind of behavior, we're going to have to terminate you. This is a good time also to get in employee assistance professionals involved. Uh, very often these kind of behaviors can be addressed through employee assistance. Uh, once it gets to the point where there's anything physical, slapping, shoving, pinching, then uh, certainly uh, the police do need to be involved. The police are going to make a better decision about what needs to be done than uh, non-law enforcement professionals. And even if no charges are filed or no um, uh, arrests are made, it does create a record in the system that if it goes further in the future, it'll be easier to get action taken. And definitely, if real hitting, kicking, biting, or use or display of a weapon is involved, certainly the police need to be involved, and uh, we need to make sure that charges are pressed at this point. Charges do need to be filed in, in that case. So um, those type of behaviors simply can't be tolerated in a civilized society generally, never mind in a work space uh, particularly. Uh, again, we've already...